Hey everyone, it's Bradley Bush with another algebra video for you. Today we are talking about Descartes' rule of signs. This is seriously cool. I don't know how someone comes up with these types of things, but just hold on. This is going to be really cool. You'll see. Our to-do list, we of course will give you what Descartes' rule of signs is. So you will talk about it. You'll see the definition and all of the little nuances. And then I'll give you a worked example because it might be hard just to look at the definition to decide what this is. But once you figure it out, you'll sit back and you'll think, wow, that's kind of cool. I don't know how someone comes up with stuff like this. So I'll also put timestamps for each of these to-do list items in the video description if you want to move ahead. But hold on, here we go. All right, here is the rule or the rules of Descartes' rule of signs. So let's digest this. It might take a second. Don't stress out because it looks like it's a lot, but it really isn't. It's doable, very doable. So the first thing I want to point out is that this, these rules are broken up into two sections. The first section talks about, in yellow here, talks about positive real zeros or positive x-intercepts. The second section talks about negative x-intercepts, negative real x-intercepts. So let's break them down into the two different sections and talk about them separately. So Descartes' rule of science really is a, a system that tells you how many positive or negative x-intercepts you could have. Real positive x-intercepts. So ones where actually the graph crosses the, the x-y coordinate plane. So imaginary intercepts here are not, or solutions are not discussed. So that's kind of cool to have some type of a, a rule set that tells you how many positive or negative x-intercepts you could have. So let's look at how it does it. So first it says it gives you the definition of a polynomial so this f right here is just the polynomial just think of it as any polynomial that you are looking at um, don't get too confused by all the notation it's just a polynomial so f is a polynomial and it says the number of positive real zeros is either a or b so what is it? what is a what is b so the number of positive real zeros is either the same number a here the same number of sign changes of f so really what we do is we look at the number in front of the first term and we say, is there a sign change between that first number and the second number? If they're both positive, there's no sign change. If it moves from positive to negative or negative to positive, that's a sign change. And we just count them. We just look at all of the coefficients of all the terms and look to see if there's a sign change moving from one to the next. But, but you, you need, though, to have your polynomial in decreasing order of exponents. So the biggest has to be first. So for example, this is five. The next one has to be four and so on. Three, two, one, this is one. And then this is the term, the constant term. So first your polynomial has got to be in the correct form. So highest exponent to lowest exponent. And then you can simply look at the sign change. So it's either the same as the number of the sign changes or it is less than that number of sign changes by a positive even integer. So what you're doing is you take the number of sign changes and you keep subtracting two from it until you get to zero or some negative number and then you stop. So that's really interesting. And one last side note, if F changes sign only once, it has exactly one positive real zero. Okay. We think about it a little bit and we're like, that's that's doable. Let's look at the negative real zeros. And the cool thing is, it's very similar to what we just discussed for the positives. There's one slight change though. The slight change is you take F and you plug in a negative X for all of the variables. And then you do the same thing. You look at how many sign changes. So the number of negative real zeros is either the same number of sign changes as you find in f of negative x, meaning you plug in that negative x and then looked at all the sign changes, or it's that number less the number of sign changes by a positive even integer. So again, you're just subtracting two from whatever you get as the number in a until you can't subtract anymore. 
And if the sign changes only once, then you've got one real zero, negative real zero. So let's look at an example. And again, once you see this, you're going to think, that's actually pretty cool. Here we go. So here's our polynomial f. 3x to the 7th minus 2x to the 5th minus x to the 4th plus x squared plus x minus 3. Kind of a big one, right? So to find the positive real zero options, well, we take f and we look at the sign changes of the coefficients. So we look at the first one. The first value or the first coefficient is 3. That's positive. The next one is negative 2. We went from a positive 3 to a negative 2. That's a sign change. So there's one sign change. Next we go negative, negative, no sign change. Next we go negative, positive. There's a sign change. Next we go, so that's two sign changes. Next we go positive, positive, no sign change, and then positive, negative. So we had three sign changes. So we have either three real positive zeros, or we subtract two from that. Three minus two is one, or one. So we either have three or we have one positive real zero. We know, we don't know which one it is yet, but we know that we have three or one positive real zeros. Amazing, huh? Yeah, I think this is pretty amazing. We know actually also that this is a seventh degree polynomial, so we know we have total seven um, zeros or solutions. Some of those may be imaginary and may not, may not actually be x-intercepts, but we know we have three or one positive real zeros. So let's look at the negative real zeros now. So the first thing we do, remember, is we plug in a negative x. So there's a negative x here, here, here. Everywhere there was an x, we plugged in a negative x. And then we simplify. That simplification, you can see right here in this next line. So now we just look at the sign changes, just like we did in the last one. So we go from negative to positive. That's a sign change. Here we go from negative or positive to negative that's another sign change here we go from negative to positive that's another sign change and positive to negative another sign change and then we have negative to negative that's not a sign change so we had four sign changes here as we went from left to the right looking at the coefficients so four sign changes what does that tell us four sign changes so that means we either have four negative real zeros or subtract two and you get two negative zeros or we subtract another two from that and we get zero so our options for negative real zeros are four two or zero negative real zeros we don't know which one it is but we know that it's one of those three options so let's look at it let's let's actually graph it and see so here you can see the graph in the center here of our polynomial f. Nice graph. Check out how many real zeros it has. So it has two negative ones and one positive one. Interesting. So the two negative ones, negative 1 1.119 and negative 0 0.758, Two negative ones, we knew that we either had, for negatives, we knew we either had four, two, or zero. So which was it? Well, it was the two. We had two negatives. And the real positive zeros, how many did it have? Or x equals 0 0.61. We knew that we either had three or one. And which one was it? Well, it was the one. So... We knew we either had four, two, or zero negatives, negative zeros, or x-intercepts, and we either had three or one positive x-intercept, and we just graphed it and found out which we had, two negatives and one positive. That's actually pretty remarkable, huh? Isn't that cool? Like, who comes up with stuff like that? By the way, as just a little side note, Descartes, the gentleman who created this, 
also is the guy who invented this two-dimensional graphing system you see here. The X and the Y coordinate, you go left or right and then up and down, and you have two points, an X and a Y, that, that describe any point here on the map here. So this point is the point 4 and 1. That was Descartes. He's the one who came up with that. So I guess he kind of liked graphing. Super cool. Well, hope this was helpful and, and interesting, kind of cool. If you liked it, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and thank you for watching.